I know the gospel. I mean, it's essential. That's our, that's our gateway. That's the doorway. That's how we get into the faith. We get into the faith by acknowledging our faith in Yahusha, acknowledging what he did on our behalf and how he redeemed us back to the Father, how he like wiped us clean, wiped our sin clean so that we could have a brand new start. Like that's beautiful and that's, that's huge. But my question started to become, after I started reading, when last year, Yah told me, a year and a half ago, I think it was last, usually last year, or year, yeah, it was 2019, when he told me to read the Bible from cover to cover. So I came out of the Old Testament into the New Testament, and it was beautiful. I had never done that before. Even though I've read throughout the Bible, I've, I've read books and, and different chapters here and there throughout my life as a believer. But reading it straight through, watching them talk about Yahusha showing up in the Old Testament in several passages, and then watching him show up in the New Testament was beautiful. Man, it was incredible. Because he showed up walking and talking and doing everything that Yah said he would do in the Old Testament. It was incredible. But yeah, after I began reading and reading more and more, I started to just want more. And I felt like, you know, the gospel is the door. Once we get in, we get the, you know, we get the gospel, we get in the house, we're saved, we have salvation. What's next? You know, when I get in the house, you know, like I've told people before, I want to see everything. I want to see the kitchen. I want to see the bathroom. I want to see the upstairs bedroom, the master bedroom. I want to see the kids' bedroom. You know what I'm saying? I want to see, you know, the attic, the basement. I want to see everything that's in the house. I want to learn about everything. I don't just want to stand by the door because I have the gospel. And I feel like that's the narrative that everybody's given. Focus on the gospel. Focus on the gospel. Focus. People have told me that so much during this time. Ishan, just get back to the gospel. That other stuff don't matter. And I'm like, nah, this stuff matters. Yeah, I'll let you go first, bro. Give, give me your thoughts, man. Give me your thoughts. Nah, you're going to put me on the hot seat <laughs> first. Yeah, I'm gonna, yo, bro, I'm going I'm to let you go ahead and start that out real quick. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to fall back and right, you Right, right, right. <laughs> <sighs> well, the, here's the thing. Okay. Um, see, when I hear people like Ishan talk uh, about the gospel, mm. you know, he's like, okay, well, well what's next? What's more? Ah, my question is, do you even understand what the gospel is, <laughs> right? Like, do you, do you really understand that you are a depraved human being? <laughs> you know, like, like you are, uh, unless you repent and turn and give your life to Christ, you're on a one-way street headed to hell. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there, there's no hope for you. There's no hope for any person on this earth without the blood of Christ, right? So my thing is, is that if you think that you want more from the gospel, what more could you get or do you want to know that although I was headed to hell, I had a savior who died, who gave his life, in order for me to not spend an eternity separated from God. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I now have a way to have a seat at the table to enjoy life, eternal life with the one and only most high God. I mean, what more could you want from that? I, I mean, to know who you are? To, to, to know the significance of your flesh or your skin color, all of the ancient Israelites are dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, they all lived, mm. they've died, they've been judged by God. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, let, let's keep it real. Not everybody who was an Israelite is with the Most High God. Right. You know So There was a lot of people who was born, flesh and blood, um, you know, a, a flesh and blood, a bloodline Israelite, who actually disobeyed God and provoked them to uh, provoke them to anger, and He mm -hmm. poured His wrath out on them. So, it really doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, or your skin color, or your lineage, or where you see yourself in the Bible. Right. You know, it's just. I mean, it, it's almost. It, it's like when, when I listen to that. W one of the things that I think about is that if you got a person that's starving, right? You know, and you're just like, hey. Come follow me, man. I'm going to go and get you something to eat, right? And then that person goes, well, that's all you're going to do? You're just going to give me something to eat? But, bro, you just told me that you were starving, that you that 
that you want food, that you want something to eat. Right. And it's just like, well, I just think that there needs to be more. It's like, but what more do you need? You know, I'm giving you the food, the, the, yeah. the food that you need, you know? Yeah. So it's 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 like, you know, I, <clears throat> it, to me, it's like sometimes I get frustrated when I hear uh, people make those type of, um, uh, well, when they make those type of statements or when they ask those, those certain type of questions. But then I think it's more pity on a person like an Ishan Burgundy or some of these Hebrew Israelites who ask these questions because majority of them that I've run into, the gospel is not sufficient. And then I'm just like, man, like, like you, like you just miss it. Like, like you say that you need more than the blood of Christ. You need more than salvation. I, I mean, it's to, to me, it's just, it's just really scary to hear that. It's, it's really, really scary to hear that. But, you know, this is why we have to continue to keep bringing out conversations like this. We have to keep talking about these things. Yeah, no, nah, I agree 100% with everything you just said, bro. I mean, it's like I see um, this this idea that uh, somehow we graduate from the gospel as Christians, first of all. Like that that whole idea. We were speaking about this earlier. That, that I mean, it's like... That is just such a a terrible and um, the longer I've been in the faith, I see how foolish that is. And I see how that really comes from like an arrogance and a a lack of really just just losing the awe of of what God has done in Christ uh, through the gospel, right? Um, right. So it's it's just, there, there is a a way in which you're just lacking the appreciation and the ability to to see these things. You know, back back in the day, I remember people used to say, um, I remember it, it being said that, yo, you know, why are there so many like conferences about the gospel this, the gospel that? Like, why 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 can't we just have a conference about you know something else? But there's always these conferences about the gospel, and there's so many books about the gospel, and I'm like, you know what? At that time, a few years ago, I would nod my head and say, yeah, you know, I think we need more conferences for other stuff or whatever it is. But if you ask me now, I'm like, you know what? If all I did for the rest of my life was every year I went to a conference about the gospel, it still wouldn't be enough for me to fully appreciate oh. the gospel. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if I live another 40 years and for every year I go to a conference and it's just about the gospel, you know, and mind you, you could you could like flesh out so many things about the gospel, you know, year to year where it's still the, about the gospel, but you're approaching it differently to to really help understand it more fully. Uh, but we can't, you know, it's just that mind blowing that it's like it is just like you actually literally need to be given the spirit of God. Like like Paul says in Ephesians three that, you know, that you would be strengthening your inner man so you'd understand the height and depth, the breadth, you know, and, and to, to know the love of Christ, right, that surpasses knowledge, right? Like you literally, like yes, the Holy Spirit exactly. has to do that to you just for you to understand God's love, right? And it's like that that doesn't cease. That doesn't cease. That continues. And so there's certainly right. an arrogance when we start to think that we can graduate from the gospel. And I think there is a... It's it's a bit it's disingenuous of him uh, for him to say that you know like you gotta like read other stuff right like you should read other stuff and, and to sort of claim that this uh, people telling him that the gospel is enough is kind of like anti intellectual right like oh like that's that's anti intellectual for me to tell you that that all you need to do is focus on the gospel like that's that's just that whole. Um, it's, it's, it's the complete opposite. It's the complete opposite. It's like, you're just seeing things upside down. You are not viewing these things, uh, the way they ought to be done, uh, ought to be viewed. And thus you find yourself in this place where you think you need more than the gospel. And, and, and just using the term a gateway, man, he, that man said the gospel is like a gateway. He didn't say yeah. That that's everything. what got me. It's like, yo, that yeah. joint's a gateway to for it, more it, knowledge. It's like, <laughs> you know yeah. Cause he's just like, well, the gospel is like a door. Okay, a doorway to what? He said, like, okay, well, I've gotten into the house. 
but I want to see what else is in the house and, and I want to examine everything that else is in the house. And I'm just like, you know, and I look at it like this. You know, when I look at a guy like Eshawn who says something such as, um, well, the gospel, the gospel, why are we always talking about the gospel? But let's talk about, um, let's talk about his wife. Let's just say if, if somebody just came to Eshawn and said, man, why are you always talking about your wife? You know what I'm saying? You always got something good to say about your mm. wife, your wife, your wife, your wife. Mm. You know, you know there's other women out there, right? You know there's other women that look good. You see what I'm saying? You're right. So, so you know, <laughs> if anybody was to say that, you'd be like, man, like, like, what's like, like what's wrong with you yeah, saying? Yeah, you might want to fight somebody. Type, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So then the question becomes, mm. how much more do we have that attitude towards the most high God? Right. Why would we not want to have not just that same attitude, but more of an attitude to want to talk about the goodness of all, the creator of all, the creator mm. who created my wife. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I'm just like, it's inc- like him saying that he has this love for Christ and he understands the Bible. It totally goes against, just like what you said earlier. You know what I'm saying? It contradicts, well, his words contradict what, the, the, the relationship that we should have with the Most High God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I should want to proclaim Jesus to the world, even until death. You know? And, and it's just like, people like him cannot uh, uh, show us in Scripture where Paul or the apostles or anyone was just like, okay, well, hey, you know, there's the gospel. We got the gospel, but then there's other things that we need to focus on as well. It's just like, no. Right. The things that we focus on should be leading us to the gospel or, or you know, should give us a better understanding of the gospel. Mm. Not just, OK, well, let's just put the let's just put the gospel over here. But we need y'all to really focus on who you are. You mm. know, your your your, uh, your identity, your ethnicity. Right. All of the stuff that Paul considered dumb, you know, <laughs> right. And being an Israelite, Hebrew mm. Hebrews. He says, you know, I consider I all of that dumb. <laughs> right. <laughs> 